All right, Joe, how far along has Jeff come? Where's that discussion at with the quarterback position this week? Uh, he's getting a little better each day. He's uh, he's out there. You know, I wouldn't say he's a hundred percent. He's getting close. So uh, he's out there. Had a good practice today. So he just out there competing. You know, both those guys are doing a nice job. Just competing with each other each day. And you know, I think Jeff will be out there at some point sooner rather than later. That's his role yesterday. Uh, offensive identity. So if you guys have one. I mean, how, how do you feel about that? How close are you to feeling like you're the, the offense that you want to be for the last half? Uh, I think we're, I mean, we kind of know who we are now. I mean, you know, the main thing with offensive identity is you don't want to be hard headed and say we do a certain thing and you may not have the players to do it. I think that we've kind of just kept searching until we find, you know, how can we, develop, how can we uh, gain some production at different spots and we know who those guys are and how to utilize them. And, you know, sometimes that comes through the air, sometimes that comes through a run, it comes through a, very, you know, a variety of different ways that you can do it. But uh, we do have an identity from a standpoint that we know, you know who we can lead on and who can produce. How have you seen the guys uh, respond um, since Saturday? Uh, great. You know, we really, uh, you know, after the game, we really challenged them, uh, you, know, co you know, coaches and players challenged each other. Just, you know, we didn't play or coach our best game on Saturday. That was what was bad. You know, they're a really good team. And then that just compounded of we didn't play very well. We didn't coach very well. And so we came back, you know, Sunday. Again, we don't ever want to be reactionary. That's what that stinks, you know. I think that you know we attacked it head on and really you know peeled back what was the, what the issues were and, and we're attacking it as coaches and players. It's a loss. Uh, it's massive. The other day you saw some things that Tyler is he wanted to see. What would you pick out from this game? Uh, it's uh, you know he you know, the the play two he gets deflected the guy and makes a phenomenal play on the interception and then I think he runs off like seven of eight for over hundred yards his next eight attempts. So I mean he's he's taking care of the football. Uh, you know. He's, he's you know, doing what he can with his legs whenever that, that opportunity arises. I think he just keeps getting more comfortable playing the position and being out there. Have you had a similar experience to this season in your, in your career of losing your top two running backs, being depleted of the receiver, losing the starting quarterback after two games that you've had? You yeah, my first year uh, at South Carolina, I had our, our GA, graduate assistant, was doing the playbook and had to point out of the office to play quarterback. So. Uh, nothing new, uh, you know, whenever you start adventures and you come into a new program and you start to build it, uh, it's not always easy and you got to be creative in how you attack, you know, daily challenges. So we don't really look at as challenges as much as opportunities to, uh, to improve and get better. Anthony had, Anthony had six carries. Is it, is it a decision to get him out of the game when he got out of control what was uh, we, we had 48 plays, and seven of those were two-minute in the half and in the game. So you really only had, you know, roughly 40 plays. So if you just do the percentages of touches, you know, sometimes it, like Billy had, I think, seven or eight touches out of 40 plays. Uh, so, uh, you know, Anthony needs to continue to take care of the ball and, and, and do what he's been doing. And really, you know, we're going to lean on him a lot these next, you know, five or six games, how many of them we have left to uh, help us be productive in the run game. I was pleased to know, you know, at that running back spot, having to spend there a few weeks. Uh, he's, you know, he's, he's done a really nice job of, you know, he, he, he's playing a lot more running back than receiver now. So, you know, being in the meeting rooms with running backs and other protections. And uh, he was in there had a couple of protections the other day, which was good uh, for him. I think he'll just, uh, just keep growing and growing as much as he can handle. We'll put him out there and see what he can do. What are the challenges or benefits to a short week from an offensive perspective? Oh, when you get to get back at it, you don't have to, you know, walk around doom and gloom. You don't have time to do that. So you got to, you know, as soon as that game's over, uh, heads, you know, head down and just start working uh, for the next game. It's going to get on us quick, which I think that's a good thing. Our guys are ready and had uh, two really good days of practice and competition. How consistent do you think the offense has been in executing the game plan from week to week? Uh, not consistent, not to our standard. Uh, you know, up and down from – you know, starting with week one, just the procedure of all, getting guys on and off the field. And then the week two, the crowd noise, the snap counts, the motions, the balls hitting people, uh, fumbles. And, you know, we've cleaned it up from a turnover standpoint the last, you know, three weeks. You know, we've calmed that down a little bit. But still just going and, and not being afraid to do your job, not being afraid to make a mistake. Just go out there and trust your training. That's our next step is just go, go relax and, and do your job and have fun and play. Uh, I think they're doing a really nice job in the one game. Uh, you know, 
uh, people know we're going to run the football. So they're stacking boxes and blitzing and doing some different things, a lot of movements that they're having to, uh, you know, kind of go through each game and figure out what's you got to, got to go through a couple quarters before you figure out what the what the opponent's doing. And they do a really nice job of IDing that and getting it, getting it under control. Yeah, overall, Illinois' defense hasn't put up great stats this year, but they do have two defensive tackles that have, were in the All Big Ten last year. What have you seen out of those guys? Yeah, very disruptive inside with those guys. Uh, you know, they. They, they're kind of like their head coach. I mean, they're built to be tough, tough, tough dudes. And, uh, you know, they're going to hit you. They're going to run to the football. Uh, those two guys are very disruptive inside. I think, you know, they play a lot of man coverage. Those corners and DBs, they're on islands all the time. They play with a certain toughness, you can tell, just off the tape. You know, just this is going to be a tough game, physical game. You guys have talked about some of the challenges that you had on the road um, that were different from being at home with noise and such at Colorado and Minnesota. Um, it wasn't Heinrich out there for the most part. So, what do you do with him, or, or you know, if he's starting, what do you what do you do with the offense to kind of prepare for what do you think Friday might bring? Uh, just like today, Coach cranked up the crowd noise, just making sure that we're uh, you know, and it's week five, six. We've been doing this together now, uh, so it's getting smoother and smoother each time we go out there. We're just you know, cranking up as much uh, uh, noise as we possibly can and, and operating through that. Thanks, guys.